Welcome to the Healthcare Consultants Podcast brought to you by the Chicago Health Law and Professional Licensing Firm of Michael V. Favia and Associates. This is your host, Nick Augustine, and today our guest is Dr. Stephanie Kroll. She's the president at Catalyst Group, Incorporated, where she works with dogs and their owners to boost, boost health and longevity with smart health solutions. Her recent book is titled, What the Pet Food Industry is Not Telling You, Developing Good Practices for a Healthier Dog. Let's say hello to Dr. Stephanie Kroll. Hi, thanks so much for having me. Thanks for giving us your time to be on here and talk about health and wellness for our happy four-legged man's best friend. (laughs) Our dogs, our pets, our cats, our major focus, and I bet that as humans we can probably learn a few tips as well about some of the things that we talk about, good dog and um, canine and animal health. Yeah, you're absolutely correct on that. Definitely you can. My book um, actually goes into explaining health and wellness around people to explain it for animals so that people can really get a rich understanding of, you know, when you go to McDonald's, for example, and then you buy commercialized pet food for your dog, it's really the same thing. It's like chemicals to chemicals. It's not actually you know, food, and that's one of the big things in, in the United States is, you know, that inability to really understand what actual food is. You know, processed food seems like food to most people, and it's it's really creating a lot of healthcare issues and a lot of really autoimmune diseases um, for people and pets. I had a cat once that got sick from a kidney disease, and they blamed it on the dry cat food. I'm not really sure all the details. It was many, many years ago, but it was something where had we maybe switched to a blend of maybe half dry, half moist food and monitored things, just some simple solutions and just simple proactivity might have really helped save that animal. But the more we live, the more we learn, and the more we find good people to help us with our veterinary needs, we get someone who can help us with good food and healthier practices so our dogs live longer, happier, healthier lives, and it saves us money long-term with vet bills. It really does. You know, a lot of people think that they can't, you know, make their food for their dog because it, you know, takes too much time or it's too expensive or it's more expensive or, um, you know, they just, I don't know, those are some of the hang-ups that people have, but the reality is, like you just said, you're going to save gobs of, you know, for the animals that end up with allergies and things like that. You're going to save gobs of money because you won't end up in those situations because your animal will be healthy. And even if you do over-vaccinate, you know, and you do give flea and tick and, you know, heartworm medications, it seems like if you feed, you know, an animal species-appropriate raw diet, um, which, you know, for those people who aren't aware, I mean, our dogs are 99% biologically the same as wolves, you know, and the kind of the quick answer is, oh, you know, we brought them into our houses and we've, you know, they don't have to hunt for their food. And (laughs) so, you know, that's why we've got to feed these kibble, you know, foods and these wet foods. And and it's just, the reality is they're 99% bioidentical. So that means their digestive tract is too, you know, you just don't get pieces and parts. So, um, it, the question is, I always ask people who are so sure that, you know, kibble's the way to go or any kind of commercialized pet food, whether it's raw or wet, it's all made the same from the same, you know, types of monitoring and it allows all the same types of things in the food. I always ask, you know, why, if a dog is 99% biologically the same as a wolf, why are you feeding them differently? <laughs> you know, and it really makes them take a second and sit back and think for a minute because it seems like when someone has a degree, and I'm, I'm one of those people, so I'm not against people with degrees. But it seems like if someone doesn't have one, they're more willing to follow someone because they have an MD or a DVM or, you know, whatever it is because they don't have that education. And they kind of leave common sense to the side. So a lot of what I consult on is bringing common sense, you know, back into thinking about whether it's your own personal health, you know, because I work with people reversing their autoimmune diseases and functional medicine, um, you know, I do the same with dogs and cats as well, and hopefully eventually horses, too. I'm going to start going in that direction. But, um, you know, I'm like, let's not throw common sense out just because someone says this is what you should do, you know? Right. Well, and I, I think that it's an easy sell for people to start doing that. 
the, the, the more difficult thing is to continue with the habit. And myself, I know that I have done this before where I was feeding my, um, animal, um, a mix. It was rice. It was a cat and it was rice and, um, carrots and some pork chops. And I would put that in a food processor, blend it up and, you know, serve her that way. And it just, I got used to, you know, time for me to eat, time for her to eat. I'm frying up something for me, cooking for me, cook for her. But after a while, it just got easier to go into the decades-long habit of here's your cat food, here's your wet food, here's your treat. And, you know, and now I'm sitting here thinking, wow, I, what would it have taken to really have cemented those habits? And I think it's just a matter of educating people about the actual real benefits. So let's talk about the yeah. book. When you decided to write the book, yeah. What was your goal for people to read the book? What was their actual takeaway that you wanted to happen? I wanted the book to be a real simple read um, and to be read in kind of two different directions. It can be read as a reference book where if you're like, do I really need to vaccinate and give all these vaccines every single year? You could simply go to that chapter. But it's also mm-hmm. a read from beginning to end of when my dog got sick and I had to figure out how to save his life. Um, I was faced with a really almost emergency situation where they told me I'd have three to four months whether I did the surgery or three to four months if I didn't do the surgery. But if I didn't do it, he was absolutely going to bleed out and die, and I was going to kill him. <laughs> so, you know, you can imagine that was super traumatizing. My dog is, you know, definitely family. Um, I've had other dogs, but he is really special. You know, he's a person. I take him everywhere. We do everything together. You know, he's just on the table for Thanksgiving, so. (laughs) Go ahead. What's his name? Oh, his name, for the, for purposes of the story, we've, uh, we've highlighted him as Winston. (laughs) For the story that's at the front of my book, so we stick, we were sticking with that to try to keep it consistent, but. Got um, it. But yeah, so the book starts explaining the situation of kind of his life so that people can kind of connect with it. Um, and then just simply goes into a conglomeration of factual, data-driven, but really easy um, to understand, you know, very conversational, um, so that people can just make that their one-stop shop. If they're like, I love my dog and my dog is sick, they re- they can read the book from beginning to end and they'll know why and they'll know how to reverse that and they'll know what diet to implement for their dog. Um, and if they've got a puppy or a little kitty or something and they're like, oh, my gosh, you know, my other dog I went through, or my other cat, I went through so many veterinary bills, and it was so expensive. I want another pet, but I just don't want to end up down that, you know, drug situation, cutting situation. They can go to that book and be like, okay, now I know how to avoid all that. Oh, it you know. could just, it's, it can be terrible. And, but, you know, and now there are all sorts of health insurance plans for pets. And I was on a veterinary uh, insurance plan, but at the end of the day, I was, um, it was the choice of it was a kidney it was a kidney failure this is with another animal and it was a choice of a surgery or we're going to do what we can and then let's let's give the you know let's have a peaceful last week and then say goodbye mm-hmm. you know and that anim- that animal was you know very elderly um you know but it's so you you know you learn from these things you know it's almost like how many animals of ours have to get sick and die before we learn what we're doing yeah. and you know, and learn where to look for the information. And, you know, so many people would go, I'm going to go right to my vet. However, veterinary practice is, one, you know, there's different schools of of ideas with different things. You've got different vets. You've got different, you know, just like as humans, we have a lot of choices in the metal, medical arena and medical communities. Um, and there's more information about that. But with dogs and other pets, there just doesn't seem like there's as much information. So I think it's really helpful to have a book that helps people actually t- sit there and say, I actually can do more than I realize. You know, you don't have to yourself get the degrees and go through all the certification training to do yeah. something you can do on your own and self-help. Yeah, you hit on a really strong point. Your point is the same for people and the same for pets. I'm not exactly sure where it all comes from or why people don't know where to go. I don't know if, like, the industry doesn't just do a good job educating or what the situation is, but the point is the same, whether it's an MD or a DVM. You know, they're traditionally trained. 
They're able to administer drugs and do surgeries, and that's their role. And for some reason, whether it's people or pets, people think that they, those types of disciplines, you know, can make your health better or fix you or restore your health, or they go to those types of people for nutrition advice to prevent disease. And everything I just said is not their job. <laughs> it's um, right. And people, for whatever reason, like you said, people don't understand that. Um, you know, that it would be a, in person, you know, people would be an OD or a functional medicine doctor or a naturopath. Those are people that you go to for nutrition, health, wellness, prevention, disease remission. If you've got an autoimmune disease like type 2 diabetes or high blood pressure, those things can be reversed. Um, so, but people don't know that it's the same thing, whether, and it's a little bit even more complicated for pets, like you were saying, because traditional MDs are taught on that same traditional platform. And just like an MD who gets their knowledge of drugs from the drug rep selling the drug, you know, a traditional DVM is going to get that same knowledge of nutrition from the pet foods that they sell at their particular establishment. But yep. if you recall, you know, when you would go to get those foods, your dog already has kidney disease or something. That's why they're giving you these specialized foods. Vet clinics, you know, unless they've changed since I've been there, you know, aren't offering, like, proper nutrition so you can prevent diseases. They're there for when you do have the diseases so they can manage it and try to help your pet be comfortable. But this is really for, you know, people who want to prevent disease, keep their dogs around as long as possible, prevent unwanted, you know, veterinary visits, and just keep and restore health. And it's a, you know, it's almost wrong to put the pressure on a traditional veterinarian or an MD, you know, to be able to do those things. It's just not part of their job. If you were to go to the University of, you know, Michigan State University and you looked at, you can Google, you know, veterinary curriculum, you're not going to find health and wellness, nutrition, disease reversal. It's just, not part of their um, education. Well, it's, so when you bring up like, naturopath, you, you yeah. bring up naturopath, and I watched a program, uh, a documentary, on really the fundamentals and the difference between how Western medicine treats and how all these uh, different naturopaths, different paths and different holistic approaches, and kind of the background of some of these things and they're in two, they are in two different directions. And I remember from learning cognitive psychology in undergrad, everything about neurotransmitters <laughs> and things that are blocking and preventing and moving things around. But it's almost like you're blocking yeah. and getting in the way of the body's natural ability to want to heal itself. And the one thing that I took from the naturopath documentary was the body is in a constant state of wanting and trying to heal itself. You just got to give the body what it needs. And a lot of times, that's our natural things that grow and come from the world around us. You're absolutely correct. You're you're right there because it's give it what it needs, but then also get out of its way by blocking it with drugs and, you know, things that create toxicity. So, yeah, mm-hmm. your body is a human or a pet wants to live in a constant state of symbiosis and, you know, have wonderful energy and great enthusiasm and happiness, and that's where your body is always trying to get to. It's just like your car. You know, if you didn't take your car or your truck in to get that oil change to get things lubed up, you know, it'd be grinding and the the engine would eventually blow. And it's really the same thing when you're trying to reverse, reverse autoimmune diseases. You know, they a lot of them all start in the gut. And things like Roundup, you know, Roundup and glyphosate, GMOs, these are the types of things that um, erode the gut lining. So imagine... <laughs> Well, some of the things that get into pet food are food that's rendered not fit for human consumption. That's one of the things that goes into our pet food, right? So if that's not rendered fit for human consumption, why should it be for our pets? And if those things are, you know, GMOs and um, those types of things are what's eroding our stomach lining, I mean, obviously, it still has to be doing the same to our pets. So, you know, those are some of the things that are allowed in commercialized pet food, as well as, you know, fat and tumors. And the FDA did a big study recently on, it was, they found 30 top dog food brands that had phenobarbital in it. Um, and how would that get in there? Well, when you euthanize a sick animal, you euthanize them with phenobarbital. So, you know, dead sick animals is what's 
in your food for those particular brands that they found. So, you know, and to think that you could get a healthy animal or even a healthy person or healthy anything out of that type of situation is crazy. I mean, when you have to put synthetic supplements back into something because all the nutrition's cooked out, you know, we've learned over the years that charring our food on a grill, you know, creates very, in even microwaves people don't use these days, create, you know, oh, wrecks the molecules yeah. so that, you know, create carcinogens and cancers. And this is really not any different. So why would we think I'll tell you. for a dog? I'll tell you, Dr. Yeah. Carl, I plan to be around a long time because I haven't had a microwave in 10 years. And when I heard about, like, the charred stuff on the – I'll tell you, I switched from the cheaper chicken breast to the organic ones because the the when I switched to the organic ones, there wasn't a bunch of stuff oozing out of it. So what is in the – you know, what's in the food, what's in the antibiotics and everything? And when you actually Please. start getting and feeling clean, you realize, oh, my goodness, now what am I doing to my pet? Yeah. And you're right, it's really sad when you start to find this all out because you're like, oh, my God, I basically killed my dog or my cat, you know, feeding them this way. Sure. And I thought I went to my annual vet appointments because they called it a health check, you know. Um, it's really it's really not because if you're feeding them properly and exercising them and giving them filtered water and not putting chemicals on or in them, you know, even down to their shampoos, you know, if you're fertilizing your backyard and putting chemicals on it, a dog walks through that, it goes right to their, you know, their bloodstream. Just like it does people, I tell all of my clients, whatever you're putting on your body goes right to your bloodstream. So if you can't eat it, mm-hmm. you shouldn't be putting it on your face. <laughs> right. So it lets so, so let us a direct questions on how people can work with you. So if someone listens to this program and says, I am now scared I'm hurting my animal, I want help, yeah. I don't have time to read your book, can I just call you, work with you, and be a client, and you tell me everything to do to healthy, make my dog healthy, wealthy, wise, happy, and tails wagon? Yeah, absolutely. They can certainly find me on my website, which is wellnessandhealthnow.com. They can email me at questions at catalystgroupsolutions.com. Um, but they can also set up a 15-minute free consultation to see if it's a good fit, you know, and if it's not, whether it's for people or pets, I have a wealth of people that I'm connected to in the field and even in, you know, various towns and cities if they want to. A lot of people are virtual working remotely nationwide just because why not? Mm-hmm. And, you know, due to COVID and everything else. Um, you can spend more time but, with your um, dog, too. Yes, which is like the whole goal, right, of having a balance in your life of being able to work and um, to spend as much time as possible because why have them if you can't spend time with them? and You know, the the thing that we don't talk about with diet and creating a diet and, like, making food for your animals, the deeper connection that you get with them as well. Uh, And I I don't talk about it, but it's pretty cool. What is important, especially that, you know, we don't realize, like, how much they reduce our stress and we live longer. You know, they're helping us live longer. We should help them live longer. So let's get through, let's go through a few more issues here. Now that we know that everyone can contact you, you are going to help everyone have the happiest and healthiest dog on the block. Let's talk about some things with vaccinations, allergies, and then pain and disease a little bit more in depth with the remaining time we have. The vaccinations. Um, there's vaccinations just like there are for people, for dogs and cats, and there's vac- <laughs> annual vaccinations. You get vaccinations for just about everything. And also, just like Big Pharma puts all of us on meds for this and that as we watch TV, and you look at all the uh, side effects, and you're like, man, if you're allergic to blah, 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 don't take blah, blah, blah. Well, how do I know if I'm allergic to it before I take it? Never figured that one out. Well, you, I mean, you could go to an allergist and they could take your blood and, you know, swab you with a, a certain amount of that drug and figure it out ahead of time. But I'm, I'm sure that, you know, 99% of the population either doesn't know that or probably doesn't do that. Right. And, I always you know, just think it's but, funny. I, it's a, yeah. all, all us lawyers yeah. like Mike Fabia with it who write all these things in the uh, in the background, you know, so if people come and sue, they say, you know, no. all joking aside, Mike Fabia is a wonderful lawyer. He works with a lot of people in all sorts of different areas in health practice, like Dr. Stephanie Kroll here and, and everybody else. And we thank you for sponsoring and having our program here. So hats off to you, Mike Fabia. Um, so what about vaccinations? I mean, they give you a list of all these different things. Do you need all of them? Do you help them figure out well, what they uh, need? 
Yeah, are we talking people or pets? <laughs> or pets. Let's, let's focus on dogs today. Otherwise, okay. that's a whole other conversation. My answer is kind of the same for both. I mean, in the United States, we overdo everything, okay? I mean, first of all, we have GMOs and things like that. And other countries like Italy and China, they don't even allow GMOs or you go to jail. So that's like a total flip of, you know, one country versus another. But as far as vaccines go, I think I read an article for people. We're like seven times more vaccinated now than we were. Our, like our kids are like seven times more vaccinated than we were when they were their age. It's like, it's so crazy. So you're right. It's like vaccine city for everything. Um, the best way to know if you need a vaccine is to know if you've got immunity to whatever you want to be vaccinated for. Um, and that's the same thing with dogs. It's just, if you can ask, you can ask for the same thing. It's called a titer. So if you're going into your dog's annual blood work, you ask for a titer. If you're going in for your annual blood work and you've got a whole bunch of measles popping up because people aren't vaccinating, which is something that happened out here in Illinois. When I went in, I'm like, give me a titer for measles. Am I immune or am I going to get this disease from all these kids running around unvaccinated? Um, <laughs> And so you can do that, and it'll tell you if you've got immunity. If you've got immunity, why would you get a vaccine? You can't get more immunity. And, in fact, that's why they're seeing there's a lot of research with people getting the COVID vaccines if they've already had COVID. There are some people by that second vaccine that are really having a strong negative uh, bad reaction, sometimes even death, because if Yeah, I know someone who died. Didn't know they had yeah. hypertension. And it was a surprise because it wasn't the family history and the mother never alerted. And the kid was my age, 45, and had went to the doctor previously two weeks earlier and was in just perfect, great health and went and got his second dose of the uh, COVID injection and he was dead within a week. Scary. I mean, freak occurrence, hopefully, but it's enough. You know, the more time that goes on, the more we realize, like, there's a reason that it takes years of trials to get things approved medically. Yes, years of trials, but also years of research and seeing yes. what happens to people, too, you know, because there just hasn't been enough time. And that's why people are, you're seeing some bad reactions on that second shot, because if they've already had COVID, it's like getting a third shot, right? Because you've had it, then you get the first shot, then you get the second shot. Whereas if you never had it, then you get the first shot and the second shot. So the second shot is just the second shot, not a third shot. Um, and that's some of the stuff that they were not aware of. You know, initially, because like you said, there just hasn't been enough time. I mean, there's a reason that you sign a piece of paper that says it's experimental and you give up all right. of your rights. When you Emergency see. use authorization, yes. So exactly. how about allergies? Now, with, yeah. with, with the dogs and allergies, we have like a few minutes left here. So with dogs and allergies, because I know it's allergy season a lot. The dogs are itching, they're outside, there's things growing. Um, what, what do we do to help the dogs with allergies? Yeah, and people, that's usually a leaky gut situation, um, and you try to figure out, you know, the root cause of it, which could be, you know, heavy metals, it could be viruses, it could be other things. You look in various areas based on the history of the person. So that those are things that can be reversed with healing a gut. But for dogs, a lot of that is a broken digestive system due to what they're eating. Kind of the same thing, almost a leaky gut situation in a dog. That inflammation, those allergies are first signs of cancer creation. In my book, they're all, all the stages of cancer creation, and you can almost look through it for yourself um, or your dog and be like, oh, allergies, inflammation, I'm on the first stages, you know. <laughs> you know, we went Yikes. from in the United States, yeah, we went from being – the number one for heart attack, stroke, and all of that is, you know, deaths in the United States to now autoimmune diseases. And that's what I specialize in. And the reason is, you know, GMOs, <laughs> um, you know, all these chemicals that are being sprayed on things are breaking your, your gut lining. So when that happens, instead of the nutrients flowing through, and if you were seeing me, I usually put up my three fingers, and it gives you a really great idea of what those little um, molecules and things look like. But when it, when you have a leaky gut situation, it goes right through to your bloodstream and it creates gobs of inflammation. Whereas normally, if your gut barrier was perfect and intact the way it should be, just the nutrients would get through and it would actually, you know, make your body healthy and promote health rather than the reverse of that. So kind of the same thing with dogs. I mean, if your dog's out there eating fat, tumors, diseased other diseased animal meat and their dog food and things like that, 
um, you can imagine their gut lining just as broken as well. And so you're going to see all this inflammation. Same thing. So you can reverse all of that by, you know, feeding a species-appropriate diet, knocking off the pills and the potions, stopping, you know, putting chemicals on and in them, and driving down their immune system. These are all things that drive down your immune system, just like they do with people. You know, if you've got a bunch of heavy metals in your body, if you've got viruses that aren't clearing, all these types of things, um, you know, create autoimmune diseases. And animals yep. follow, you know, shape and form just the same. You know, it's it's interesting. There's people talk about feeding your pets what they naturally crave and want to eat, and there's some of the there's the you know like well, I look at the cat food aisle and they have the ones with you know it's fish and then, well, that makes sense you know and then chicken. I've never seen a cat take off and run across a pasture chasing down a chicken. Do they want chicken? You know, I mean, so it's we when you really look at some of the things and you think about all the marketing. And all the different foods and, you know, some are more expensive, have a fancy label, you know, still yeah. doesn't mean, I just, I just, I don't know that I can trust what's actually in the package. And maybe I've just seen too many documentaries about, you know, when good people do the wrong thing and cut corners and, you know, the, yep. the, there was something about Red Lobster on the news the other day about their responsibly sourced so-called, you know, where they get all their fish products and then, People are making claims and there's actually huge lawsuits about, no, 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 they're not actually getting it where you think they're getting it into some par uh, product, even though their website and everything else proclaims to have all the best stuff. So, you know, how do you control? I mean, it's, it sounds like getting back to making your own food and not being hooked into the, you know, the nutrition, the pet food industry seems like the, really the best way to go. Yes, I mean, that is the only way. You can't know what's in a bag of food. And if you turn over a bag of dog food, which is anywhere from 20 to 30% fat, depending on what the source of meat is, and they kind of seem to, you know, say that's positive. So if a wolf's out and they're catching prey, say they're catching, I don't know, a chipmunk or a rabbit, you're talking 2 to 3% fat. Um, and, you know, you flip over a bag of dog food and you're anywhere from 20 to 30%. Again, like you said, it's marketing. It has nothing to do with health or wellness. It can't. You know, synthetic supplements and all the things that I mentioned that could possibly be in there. You're absolutely correct. You have to make it yourself. For yourself, you know, as a human, but you should also do it for your pet. I mean, when you are eating processed right. food, out of a, if you're eating anything out of a box or a can most times, um, it's processed food, so it's not actually food. And when we think of things like lunch meat, polani, these types of things, all these things were created when the world wars were happening to feed the soldiers on the field so that they could get them food so they wouldn't die on the field. It was never yes. meant to be actual food. There's cookies <laughs> you know, and crackers. It was like Snickers bars. Or there's a really great uh, series on that on the History Channel. It's a history of how food made America. And, you know, they're talking about like large amounts of calories packed into small meals and easy things and um you know and the people all in love with the car and stopping and getting the mcdonald's and then you know but like then they talked about the super size thing is like you know the morgan spurlock did that documentary where he's eating mcdonald's every day five thousand calories a day. i mean man no wonder so i mean so much of damage we can do but reversing 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 when we go mm -hmm. to better food the body gets in that health system and wants to fix everything. So, you know, let's say that we have pets that are middle-aged. How long until we can expect to see some improvements? And how do we know that when they're improving? Is it a healthier coat? Are the eyes clearer? Um, what are some ways to see when we talk about reversing some of the negative impacts of feeding them poor food? Yep. You're, you're right on the right track again. Um, you know, when I gave my dog his I first did my research. <laughs> <laughs> You're like right on it. Um, when I when I gave him his first raw chicken leg, he looked at me like, "This mine? This for me?" <laughs> <laughs> you know, all he ever had was you know food, like commercialized dog food. I gave him his first raw chicken leg, and he was. I'm like, "Yeah, buddy, what do you think?" You know, because if we have any kind of negativity or anything in our voice, our animals pick up on that. So I wanted to make sure I gave him a chance to really eat real food, and he was like, mm -hmm. "This is good." 
<laughs> you know, and I, I held the whole chicken leg because he's older. He was 11 when he was diagnosed. He's going to be 14 now. And, um, you know, I held it for him and he was like, this is amazing. <laughs> you know, he was like smiling. He's like, you, you, and I just knew, I knew at that moment, I finally got it right. Um, you know, cause when I was looking, I mean, I didn't, don't think I slept for well over 24 hours. I was looking at homeopathy and Chinese medicine and holistic medicine. And after all of that, you know, trying to find a way to fix him because I just knew surgery was not right for him. Dog. And I just, after the biopsies, his personality wasn't even back for like a month. He was just a real sensitive dog. And I just said, I, I got to figure out another way. Um, and so that's when I choose, you know, I chose diet. And so when he was eating that raw food, you'll know. So here's some of the things you're going to see, like you said, you're going to see amazing digestion. Um, you're going to see my dog actually regrew an entire new coat of hair. When you have allergy dogs, you're going to see that pink on the belly, that redness. You're going to see hair falling out of the, you know, the stomach area. The legs will be thin with hair. That's all inflammation. And that'll just keep going on and spreading and, you know, turning into allergies. And then you've got sores on their skin. It'll just keep going if you don't stop the root cause, which is the food. Um, you know, and possibly if you're vaccinating every year. There was a study by the University of Wisconsin in Madison they found that after that first year of vaccine, dogs don't need any till eight to ten years old, if at all, ever for the rest of their lives with most dogs. So if you're wow. going to those annual appointments for those vaccines, it's just for money. It's not for the health and wellness. How could it be? If a dog doesn't need it, you know, they tire the dog every couple of years to, you know, to see when their immunity waned. I was tiring. I didn't give my dog vaccines past three years old. Thank God, I was glad I didn't do that much. And he still ended up, you know, sick disease, them wanting to cut out body parts at 11 years old. So think about that. Think about if I had continued, I probably wouldn't have had a chance of saving him if I would continued to vaccinate too. Because all of that, when you're overdoing anything, it's creating toxicity. The body can't keep up. It can't, you know, it naturally detoxes by the things that you put in it. And if you don't, there are two levels of detox phase one and phase two, and if it's not getting the nutrition in people, pets too, your body's not going to push that, push the things out of its body to detox it, to keep it healthy. So again, nutrition is key for that, you know, and if you're, you're a dog and you're eating all these synthetic isolatory substances, you know, a body can recognize an apple, and that's the issue with supplementation. It's one thing if it's like a freeze-dried apple and it's been fully intact, it's better. I mean, a fresh one's better because your body understands what to do with those nutrients. Um, but when you've got an isolus, you know, one one piece of the puzzle, it's like, you know, let's just detoxify and push it out of the body. It's not it's not recognizing it. <clears throat> and already it's, there's now so there's much, tons of research. Go ahead. There, and, and you know what? I, so, so many times I have blamed technology and the Internet for all the perils of the world because – but you know what? Tools can be used mm-hmm. for good and for not good. And there's all sorts of good that's out there. And, you know, getting this information and learning how to heal yourself, heal your dog, heal your – so much can be healed by preventative health and just general yes. health and wellness exercise in, like, cutting sugar out of your diet. My goodness, <laughs> I've learned so much. I have a cl- I have a client I do marketing for. is a skinny performance weight loss in Highland Village, Texas, and they are very much, you know, on, on the shrinking the fat cells and the fat burn mode. And, you know, people don't realize you drink a beer or have a glass of wine and you're kicking your other self out of fat burn mode for, you know, three to four days. Um, you know, mm-hmm. and people just don't know that because – you know, who's gonna? It's it's convenient what we learn through the media, and someone's always selling something, and the money, yeah. and you follow the money, and there's a lot of money in the insurance industries, the food industries, the health industries, but we don't need to live asking whether AstraZeneca can help us because of all these pills we have to take if we just feed ourselves what our bodies need and we're going to do it for our pets and Dr. Stephanie Kroll is going to help us all. So thank you so much again for being on our program. Tell us again how people can get directly a hold of you. Yeah, absolutely. My website is probably the best, wellnessandhealthnow.com. 
Uh, in my book, I even provide all the things that I use for my dog. So you can go right there and you don't have to, you know, the guesswork of, oh, will this work or is this a good machine or do it, should I use it? It's all right there for clients. So my website for people and pets is everything I give to my clients and everything that I've used myself. So that's kind of a wealth of research and a gob of, <laughs> a gob of information right there. And then also, it's good. Email There's... questions. Go yep. Go ahead. Go. Yeah. I, I, I just, you know, when I do stuff for people, I put it in one spot so that everybody, I'm an educator by trade, you know, two decades of being a, a higher education administrator. So, you know, I like to provide value more than anything um, and get to people where they need to go so that they can be successful. I mean, I did that for two decades. So, you know, I just, I bring that into functional medicine. I bring that into my certification in raw dog food nutrition. Um, and I just kind of, kind of the same person, same philosophy, but now with people and pets restoring their health. Well, and I think that within the last 12 months of people's concerns with health and comorbidities, now everyone knows what these are. And now maybe it's like maybe people will wake up a little more and not just say, hey, if I have become a have a health problem, the doctor will just magically fix me. Like, you know, the ma- the magician doctors, they just magically, you know, wave their <laughs> wand and poof, you know. Um, but it's expensive. And a lot of the insurance and the hospital bills and all that, like I have a friend whose mother always says, you pay for it ahead of time or you're going to pay for it later. But if, if you're going to live a long <laughs> life, don't you want to yeah. live a healthy life? And, you know, when you eat the right foods, you know, you look at the, it's funny, when we look at pictures of things in the 70s, it's not to say obesity wasn't an issue or problem back in those days, but not as prevalent. And we see, you know, again, with the, with the, so many processed foods, and, you know, if you can't, if you can't pronounce it, just don't eat it. Like, I just think, you know, if I put a bumper sticker on my truck, if you can't pronounce it, don't eat it. And don't feed it to your dog. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. I couldn't agree more. You know, you've got to, you've only got one life, right? And uh, the older you get, the more you realize that. And then there's yep. quality of life. So if you've only got one life, by golly, you know, I want to be able to go to those football games and walk to the top of the, you know, the arena. And I want to be able to go skiing. And, you know, I'm an outdoors person. So um, if I'm going to live, I want to live long and I want to die the natural way in my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> you know, or yeah, it, drugs, I saw a lady on a, on a chairlift in Aspen uh, when I was in college, and she was 70-some years old. And I said, I want to be out there snowboarding when I'm 70 years old. And I'll tell you what, I'm 45 right now. I tried going snowboarding when I was 35 about 10 years ago, and I was I could barely keep up. I was overweight, <laughs> not flexible. You try to do those catwalks after not doing that for a long time, you know, and you start realizing, hmm. And, you know, you look at how many people in their 40s, you know, almost like submit to, well, I'm going to be old, and by the time I'm 50, I'll be disabled in a wheelchair and on Social Security or whatever. There are people who live with that as like, well, that's how it was in my family. It's how it was, you know, for cousin this or, you know, someone else. No, 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 no. We can all do better. So, Stephanie, thank you again for your time, and we hope to have you back as a guest in the future with more interesting developments as we can all learn how to live better for ourselves yeah, and others. So, Thanks so much. Such a good thing. All right. Well, thank you again. And thank you for all those who find these programs and listen to the uh, Chicago Health Law and Professional Licensing firm of Michael V. Favia Associates podcast. We uh, ask you to also share them when you find them, uh, whether on LinkedIn, a newsletter, or Facebook, because you just never know who out there is looking for exactly this type of information. So thank you all and have a great day, and we'll be back soon with another great show. All right. Bye-bye now.